All right, I want to cover this example uh, on sinking fund. Uh, this this idea, I guess, it used to sort of scare me. I don't know why. Anytime you hear something new, you're like, oh my god, what the hell is that? <laughs> it's not too complicated, honestly. So here's the deal. These are just some of the details they gave me. I wanted to write them out first. I want to look at anything. I want to just have it and just know what to do, right? Um, we have a 20 year loan and the loan amount is $20,000. Uh, for obvious reasons, I use L for the loan amount and we have an option. We can either pay this back, this loan using the amortization method. Remember amortizing a loan is just making a series of payments where each payment consists of part principal, part interest. Okay. So just paying back the loan. Um, the sinking fund method, which is something that's probably new, of what this is, the idea, and they don't even tell me how to, how to do it, they just say the sinking fund method, they just said no. What this is, is um, instead of making these payments, part interest, part principal, annually, say in the amortization method, now <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to make payments on the loan that are only interest. Okay, so in each year, actually, I'm going to keep owing $20,000. I'll keep owing $20,000. In fact, on year 20, I'll still owe $20,000 because I've paid nothing of office balance. I haven't changed that balance at all. Um, so how do I actually pay for it? What I do instead is I make payments into a different account called a sinking fund. I make annual payments here that will accumulate to $20,000. Remember, I'm still going to owe $20,000 at the end. Cause I'm not actually making any payments on the principal. So that's the idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we're told this is quite important that both methods require payments of X. Now something to think about is X going to be the amount of money I'm putting in the sinking fund every year? No, no, it's not the total payment for the payments I'm making under the sinking fund method add up to X. So what is X then? Well, under the amortization method, I'm making annual payments on my loan and that's the only payments I'm making. That's going to pay off the loan. So those must be X, right? So under the amortization method, I'm making a payment of X. I'm making a payment of X and I'm making a payment, all, all these 20 payments, right? Of X. And I don't know what X is, but I can easily figure that out. So what's an equation I can write down? for the amortization method. Well, what I can say here is the following. I can say that whatever the loan is, it's equal to X times the present value of the annuity for 20 years. 20 years at interest rate 6.5%. Right? That's exactly what I'm doing there. I mean, this is just an annuity immediate and the loan amount, what I'm paying back is 20,000. And so I have all this, right? I have the interest rate. I mean, easy peasy at this point. <coughs> Definitely going to use this guy to compute this. Let me show you how to compute this. Um, what we're going to do is hopefully we can see this actually, because I don't want to write it down really. So to compute X, I'm going to do... I need to clear the time value of money. Here's the time value of money over here. I'm going to clear that. Press enter. Now I'm looking over here. I'm going to compute X, right? So I need to, uh, let's do the number of years. It doesn't matter the order actually. Number of years is 20. So I press 20 and that's my number of years. So N, 6.5, 6.5. I plugged in 6.5 exactly. And that's my I over Y interest rate per year. And now I have 20,000 is the present value. So 20,000 is PV, present value. What do I want to compute? I want to compute the payment. X is the payment. So I'm going to compute CPT, the payment, and is this number. So doing that, I get X. So my value for X is 18, one, five, 
0.1279. So I have my calculator so that it rounds to the nearest four decimal places. So 1815.1279. Those are my annual payments. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to use that. So it's important that I got that. Now I'm going to deal with the sinking fund. The sinking fund, uh, I don't know what the payments are in the sinking fund, right? I mean, because um, I'm paying interest as well uh, on the loan. So I'm just going to call these R. Okay, these are my sinking fund payments. I don't know what they are, but as I mentioned, uh, for the sinking fund method, for the sinking fund method, I'm going to use SF, we pay the interest every year. We pay the interest every year, right? So we're basically going to pay 20000 times whatever the lender receives. And actually, there's different interest rates for the sinking fund method. The lender receives 8% here, so this is going to be um, 20000 <coughs> times the interest rate that the lender receives, okay? And if I wanted all of these, if I wanted all of these, then I'd multiply this by 20, right? Because I'm making 20 of these. So this takes care of the interest rate that the $20,000 loan gains every year, okay? I just want to do one of them because what I'm figuring out right now, and a lot of times this is typical for sinking fund questions, you want to figure out what is the annual payment. The annual payment of the sinking fund is whatever the interest I pay plus, plus R, and that's going to equal X. Remember that uh, whatever I pay for the sinking fund is equal to whatever I pay under the amortization method. All right, let me give myself some room because I'm definitely going to need it. And I claim that we can actually do this now. So let me show you what I mean. And ultimately, I'm going to give you actually the equation, the general equation for basically evaluating a lot of these sinking fund problems. Um, again, I mean, I thought about making a video on this, but it'd be like five minutes, maybe even two minutes. So what is R? I mean, look at what R represents. So... <coughs> Look what R represents. So in my picture here, I'll write it over uh, here maybe. R accumulates to 20000 right? These payments of R are supposed to accumulate to 20000 That's the idea of a sinking fund because um, I'm only paying the interest every year. So I need to make payments into a sinking fund that accumulate to the loan. All right, well, I mean, think about this for a second. I'm going to write down the equation. That means that the loan of 20000 okay, it's still worth 20000 20 years later. I'm paying the interest every year is equal to R times the accumulated the accumulation of all these payments at interest rate J remember J is what the sinking fund earns I don't even know what that is that's actually what I want to calculate I want to calculate J so this is my formulation of R so what is R equal then so R doing some simple algebra R is equal to 20,000 divided by the future value of an annuity immediate. Wonderful, wonderful. So now, let me write down the equation that you pretty much use in all these sinking fund problems, and it's quite intuitive if you ask me. The left-hand side is going to be the payment per period, in this case per year, that I make for the sinking fund method. What is that? Well, I make the loan I make the payments on the interest of the loan. This is just for one year. So I get here and I pay the interest on the loan. Okay, well that's L times I. I remember I was 8%. Okay, what else do I pay under the sinking fund method? Well, I pay R, right, every year. So plus R, but R is equal to L over S 20 J. And actually I'll just write N. I'm just gonna write it in general right now. We have all the ingredients, but I'm waiting to see where this comes from. And then that's equal to, that's equal to the payment per period under the amortization method, which is equal to L divided by A N sub I. This is the general formula uh, for the sinking fund method. 
And let me just write down what I said, kind of, to make sure you understand what I'm saying. This, on the left side, the left side, these are the payment per period under sinking fund method. This is the payment per period under amortization. method. Let's fill in everything uh, that we have. Let's fill in everything. We have a lot, right? And remember, our goal here is to find J. Our goal is to find this. And actually, that is the only thing we don't have. That's the only thing we don't have. So let me show you how to get that. So we are told all the information. So we have a loan of $20,000. We're given I, okay, the loan of $20,000 times the interest rate to the lender, which is 0 0.08, plus, again, loan of $20,000 divided by, in fact, you could just get rid of the loan. Just divide everything by L, and L's gone. You could do that if you want. Uh, divided by S and J, so accumulated value, we have 20 years and J. We don't know what J is, we're looking for J. Equals, and we computed this, remember, uh, this is just X, right? This right here is X. This is just X. We, can, we found X. Uh, X was, X was something, what the hell was X? X is 18, 18, 15, 12, That was our X value, I erased it we computed it though, right? <coughs> I showed you in the calculator. One equation, one unknown. This is the prime example that illustrates why you need to use this damn thing. Let me show you what I mean. Do some simple algebra. I mean, bring this over to that side, okay? Uh, this is equivalent. This is equivalent to saying, okay, just. I don't want to do it. I mean, you know what I mean. Just do the algebra. Bring this over, okay, and then multiply by this. So this says that 20,000, simple algebra, is equal to 215.13S20J. Everything reduces to this. And I claim, first of all, without a calculator, this sucks. Think about what you have to do. I mean, what if you don't have a calculator, specifically, you don't have a BA2 plus or a financial calculator, how would you deal with this thing? This is 1 plus J to the 20 minus 1 over J. How are you going to solve, find the J that makes this equation true? This is a polynomial degree 20, <laughs> but then you have J underneath here. Think about that. It's a nightmare. All right. So prime illustration uh, as to why you need the BA2 plus. And I'm going to write it down. I won't, I'm going to write it down the steps here. So by the way, <coughs> what does this represent? This is the sinking fund payment. So notice it's not, it's not this, right? This is actually my sinking fund payment. So it's different than um, the payment we made per year for amortization. It should be. I mean, I'm paying the interest off separately, right? All right. So intuitively, that makes sense. All right. So now, let's do some of the calculator. So on the BA2+, plus, that's what I'm using. On the BA2+, plus, this is what we're going to do. And this actually, questions like this were the reason why I said, I got to figure this shit out. I got to figure out how to use this calculator because this is hopeless without it. All right, we're going to do, the order really doesn't matter with this, but I'm just gonna do, pick an order, so I'm gonna start here. So we're gonna do 20,000. What does 20,000 represent here? 20,000 is the future value. So FV, these are the keystrokes. 20,000, future value. Um, now I'm gonna do my payment, okay? Uh, so 215.13. 
you have to, you don't have to, but if you want things to work out nicely, you want to put your payment always in as a negative value. So I'm going to do the payment plus or minus. This represents the payment, so PMT, right? Uh, now I'm going to do 20, and that's the number of uh, payments I'm making, and this times that's in years. And what I want to compute, I want to compute CPT uh, J. Uh, compute, sorry, compute. Uh, I over Y. I over Y represents J. It's the interest rate uh, per, actually the I over N. Yeah, no, it's I over Y, interest rate per year. And this gives you, this gives you, um, what does it give you? Something. This gives you 14.2. So that's my answer actually. So therefore, uh, this is my answer. So J is 14.2%. So J is 14.2% and that's the answer. So hopefully you see the value of this thing. Tell me what you think. Hope this was helpful and thank you for subscribing.